presentation deals with candid discussion on evaluation and management of goiter. A 48-year-old serving officer in CISF was detected to have neck swelling three years during annual checkup. Thyroid profile was normal. He was diagnosed to be suffering from goiter, advised to avoid cabbage and radish. Some increase in goiter size took place for next three years. Three years down the line, he was denied promotion on medical grounds of presence of goiter. He filed a petition in court. So this was the clinical picture, a goiter being not treated and he was denied promotion by the authorities. A 25 year old lady complained of swelling neck since later half of pregnancy. On evaluation, she had grade to diffuse enlargement with a transfer scar mark. She had underwent thyroid surgery before marriage. She did not receive any treatment before surgery, after surgery and during pregnancy. Thyroid profile at the time of evaluation was within normal limit. Anti-TP antibody was positive. A 38 year old woman came for evaluation of neck swelling for about 12 years. She had some discomfort on swallowing a local healer had advised tattooing five years prior. The swelling had apparently remained constant in size initially, but started increasing. There was a grade three multinodular goiter with tattoo marks. So we are forcing them to go to faith healers or to unqualified people by telling them not to worry, not to do anything. She had clinical evidence of retrosternal extension, and that was confirmed on imaging study. Now she is a candidate for surgery because of retrosternal extension with compressive symptoms. Then a lady, 28 years old, with grade 3 multinodular goiter, biochemically euthyroid, sonographically multiple nodules, with cystic degeneration, FNA showed benign cellular morphology. She was advised because of size of the tumor, subtotal thyroidectomy. Intraoperative and immediate postoperative periods were uneventful. Three weeks after surgery, she presented with muscular cramps, tingling and numbness of hands and feet, irritability, disturbed sleep, and lethargy. She was slightly anemic hypothyroid, hypocalcemic with hyperphosphatemia, and insufficiency of vitamin D, which was coincidental. So she developed hypopara after surgery. So that is a complication. So scar mark, hypopara, change in voice are the common complications. They are not common, but they are not uncommon as well. This was a nine-year-old boy presented with swelling in the upper part of neck, which moved upwards on protrusion of neck. Synthes scan showed ectopic thyroid gland. He was clinically and biochemically euthyroid. But since ectopia many times is associated in later life with hypothyroidism, and he had a swelling which was not desirable by the which was not desirable to look at, he was prescribed thyroxine with reduction in the next size, next swelling size. There is another lady with swelling in almost the same location as the previous child which turned out to be thyroglossal cyst. So here you require surgery if it becomes cosmetically demanded or required by the patient.
otherwise it can be left as such for so the previous child was a candidate for thyroxine supplementation to prevent further increase in the swelling size so with these case reports let us look at the epidemiology you can have enlarged thyroid gland which can be diffuse or nodular which can be hypo hyper or euthyroid it can present with compression symptoms the prevalence is estimated to be more than 2 billion cases worldwide in india prevalence is expected to be 40 million projected to be 40 million if patient has hypo or hyper you start treatment appropriate to the biochemical status if it is euthyroid do surgical intervention if it is large causing compression symptoms if there is malignancy or when medical management is not practical or ineffective radio iodine therapy is suggested to decrease the mass of the thyroid gland and to take care of autonomy if it develops in a multinodular goiter setting you have guidelines from endocrine society from indian thyroid society from ata discouraging use of thyroxine labeling it as unscientific unethical and unwarranted therapy for you thyroid goiter the presumption that goiter is innocuous is harmless i feel is debatable a person who sees a swelling in his neck day in and day out would be troubled by thoughts of existence of an abnormality looking at it would not be a pleasant experience for him or her it may be noticed and pointed out by friends colleagues workmates they by making the person more aware of the abnormality as i described a case of cisf officer it is a ground for denying promotion and enrollment in paramilitary and armed forces it may be cosmetically undesirable and may pose problems in matrimonial issues consensus however is to leave it as such surgical intervention or radio iodine therapy is required radio iodine therapy alone or with pre treatment with recombinant tsh if it becomes large enough to cause cosmetic issues or causes compression and surgery followed by radio iodine if it becomes malignant if you look at the patient education leaflet from ata it says that many goiters such as multinodular goiter are associated with normal levels of thyroid hormone in body, in blood these goiters usually do not require any specific treatment after appropriate diagnosis is made if no specific treatment is suggested you may be warned look at the language you may be warned that you are at risk of becoming hypo or hyper in future however there are problems associated with the size of the thyroid such as the goiter getting so large that it constricts the airway your doctor may suggest treatment by surgical removal so effectively we ask the patient to wait till it becomes large enough or it becomes malignant or it causes compressive symptoms to undergo surgery we have cases of malignancy treated with surgery and radio iodine therapy being given thyroxine suppression trial in the hope that recurrence would not take place locally or distally if a de differentiated malignant cell can be expected to respond to tss suppression by high doses can't we expect a normal thyroid follicular cell to respond to supplemental doses i am repeatedly emphasizing not the suppression dose but supplemental dose and there is evidence to this in the form of lisa trial 
which was conducted in west german city involving 1024 subjects over a period of 1 year and it was placebo controlled prospective trial there was an iodide supplementation arm where the patients or the subjects received 150 microgram of iodine iodide per day a placebo arm thyroxine supplementation arm receiving 75 mic of thyroxine per day and dose adjustment at three monthly interval to keep tsh above 0.2 and a combination of thyroxine and iodine supplementation in dose of 75 microgram of thyroxine with 150 microgram of iodide dose titration was done at three monthly interval at the end of one year there was 5.2% reduction in nodular size in placebo group 9% in iodide supplementation group 12.6% in nodular nodule size in thyroxine supplementation and the decrease in combo of thyroxine and iodide supplementation group was 21.6% from baseline the reduction in goiter size was 10% from baseline in combo group as against 1.9% in placebo group so this is a strategy which is cheap readily available free from side effects as long as tss suppression is prevented by periodic monitoring and 21% reduction in nodule size and 10% reduction in goiter volume will be sufficient to render grade 2 goiter non visible and serve the purpose of most of those suffering from small thyromegaly however there are some questions the long term course of the thyroid nodule after the end of the treatment potential indication for switching to long term iodide monotherapy from a combo an optimal target range for long term tsh control need to be established advantages are low cost non invasive nature and no need for hospitalization these advantages are unclear mechanism of action lack of data on long term success hydrogenic hyperthyroidism is a possibility and diminishing compliance over time and being ineffective in large and nodular goiters multi nodular goiters after dr mayur asked me to make a presentation i collected retrospective data from 15 july to 17th of september 37 patients came for evaluation with two thyroid goiter on thyroxine supplementation nine were men 28 were women aged 18 to 45 years under treatment for 3 months to 3 years baseline tsh range from 0.9 to 3.8 and thyroxine dose was from 25 to 88 mic diffuse goiter was present in 32% solitary thyroid nodule on in 27 and mng in 40% in one patient the size increased Two patients reported no improvement. Eighteen patients reported some improvement. Eleven were satisfied with the degree of decrease. Near complete regression was reported by five, and treatment was discontinued in last three months. In last two months, in two patients, thyroxine supplementation is not indicated in this type of goiter. but small goiter are definitely the candidates to be given a trial for 3 to 6 months and subjected to definitive therapy in the form of surgery or radio iodine if required i understand that many of you would not agree with the proposition but leaving patients with advice to keep coming back month after month till it becomes large enough to be surgically treated is something which i feel find rather difficult to accept thank you